Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site for premium content, dwyer70905.substack.com. Let's talk about a bet that I think is compelling. Today is Friday, August the 27th, 2021. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now to my surprise, and the casino will always surprise you. To my surprise, Oscar De La Hoya, who I can just flatly tell people, was one of the best fighters I had seen in the 1990s, right? And I'm someone who believes Pernell Whitaker beat him, right? But Oscar was the real deal. Great fighter. Um, in his heyday, you understood. He was going to steamroll Julio Cesar Chavez, who was big at the time, right? In his heyday, you understood that he was going to take dangerous fights, right? Dangerous fights. That when you look back at the De La Hoya record, you could list great fighters that De La Hoya had fought, right? Now, I want Terrence Crawford to think about this because my fear is that Crawford, who's immensely talented, is not going to be thought of as an Oscar De La Hoya or a Ray Leonard, a guy who barely fought in the 1980s, but when he did fight, it was against people like Duran, Hearns, and Hagler, right? Well, let me just say this. We're, we all speculate on people's personalities. Um, I do believe De La Hoya wasted his talent. I believe he was one of these guys who was just gifted. Didn't have to work too hard at it. I could be wrong but I believe he didn't have to work too hard at it. And then as he got older, while guys like Bernard Hopkins were continuing to grind, were continuing to improve, were continuing to work their craft, De La Hoya reached a point, this is before the Pacquiao fight, where he started taking fights off, where he started fighting people who weren't even his size, Steve Forbes, that fight, right? I believe De La Hoya had a nightlife. I believe De La Hoya had a social life. That's how we'll put it. I don't believe De La Hoya was as dedicated as a Floyd Mayweather, for example. I don't believe boxing was as big a part of his life as it was for some of the other fighters. And I believe De La Hoya let his skills deteriorate. Right? I also think De La Hoya was one of these guys who was kidding himself. I'm just being blunt here, keeping it real. So when he was fighting Pacquiao, who was smaller? Pacquiao has to gain weight to fight Oscar at 147. De La Hoya made some concessions. Right? Now keep in mind, this was a guy who had just fought Steve Forbes, another guy who was smaller. De La Hoya allowed the contract to have certain clauses, right? A rehydration clause and stuff like that, that didn't allow him to come in the ring much bigger than his opponent. And when he was the same size as Manny Pacquiao, who was blindingly fast, hell, Pacquiao's blindingly fast now, right? De La Hoya just didn't have the reflexes to compete because those reflexes had decayed over several fights due to De La Hoya's lifestyle, right? Even the fight against Floyd Mayweather, De La Hoya was picking on a smaller guy, right? Later in De La Hoya's career, matchmaking played a much bigger role than it had when De La Hoya was in his prime. And sadly for De La Hoya, that was when he was in his late 20s, early 30s. So, with that being said, let me say this. You know, of all the greats coming back who I feel are vulnerable, De La Hoya is at the top of the list. In part because De La Hoya, if you 
study him carefully, is really a one-handed fighter, right? You understand De La Hoya is really a southpaw. He's fighting inverted so that dominant hand is actually his jab hand. What does that mean? It means that if he's fighting a technical fighter, if he's fighting a Mayweather, if he's fighting an Evander Holofield, in other words, these are guys who come in the ring and they know what hands your dominant hand. They know that if you stick that left out there, they can jump in on your right hand because your right hand doesn't have the power of your left. They know that if they dodge your left, if they dodge your jab, they've dodged your big punch, right? With De La Hoya, the big punch was a left hook. You'll notice in the Mayweather fight, Mayweather allows himself to get pinned on the ropes. Mayweather's prepared for the left hook. Mayweather at times seems to even be laughing because he understands that that right can land and it's not going to hurt him. So, against other older fighters who are technical, who come in the ring not just thinking about their style and what they're going to do, but who come in the ring thinking about your style and what you're going to do, I believe De La Hoya is vulnerable, right? I also feel, too, that the athletes who can compete in their late 40s, early 50s are the Tom Brady-type guys. In other words, the guys who have kept themselves in shape. Not a lot of yo-yoing. I get the feeling Vladimir Klitschko, if he's keeping the fitness regimen that he kept when he was a fighter, where I never saw him out of shape. Right? Evander Holofield never saw him out of shape. I get the feeling it's guys like that who can come back and who can actually do things. Whereas a Roberto Duran, Roberto's too old now, but let's say Roberto Duran, who was highly skilled, highly skilled, but who let his body go a little bit. I think a guy like that would have problems coming back. Now, apparently, gamblers think that, too. Because Oscar De La Hoya against a non-boxer, I know Belfort has one boxing match on his resume. I'll concede that, right, from about 15 years ago, right? And he won that fight. But let's face it, Belfort isn't the boxer Oscar is, right? The casino, believe it or not, is only requiring a minus 200 on De La Hoya. Now, folks, how's that possible? Understand, the De La Hoya-Floyd Mayweather fight was a split decision. One of the judges thought Oscar won that fight. Right? Understand, Oscar beats fighters like Ike Corte. Right? El Faroz, Fernando Vargas. Oscar has a long list of excellent fighters who we beat. Hinata Hernandez, another Oscar De La Hoya victim. I feel that one of the biggest farces I've ever seen is the Oscar rematch against Shane Mosley. I thought Oscar beat Shane Mosley. To this day, I don't know what fight the judges saw. By the way, full disclosure, Brian Kenny and Max Kellerman live doing the fight, thought Mosley won the fight. Okay, fine. I'll be in the minority. Not the first time. But let's talk about why I feel, even with my doubts about Oscar. Right? Oscar has a gorgeous new girlfriend now who he's been photographed with out on the town. This is while he's supposedly training for Belfort. Right? Even with my doubts about Oscar, I believe Oscar De La Hoya at minus 200 represents compelling value over Victor Belfort, based on some research I've done. In my favorites folder right now here on YouTube is a fight, Victor Belfort versus Kelvin Gastelum. Now let me just say, Gastelum is a puncher. No question about it. But what you'll notice is that 
Belford might have chin problems. Right, Belford has been KO'd in more than one fight. And when Belford gets hurt, folks, the lights go out. Right, this is a guy who's standing up one minute, then he gets hit. Guess what? He's on the canvas. Now, I'll agree. Oscar's heyday was really at 147 and 154. Right? This fight's going to be heavier. But understand, Oscar in his heyday was one of these weight cutters. Right? He was the opposite of Floyd Mayweather. He was the opposite of Manny Pacquiao. Right? Understand, the Floyd and Manny side of the equation, and I'm not talking about really young Floyd, when Floyd was trying to cut weight. I'm talking about the older Floyd. On that side of the equation, the idea is, hey, look, man, this is what I weigh. I'm going to be the best at what I weigh. Right? I believe those guys have an advantage in the long run. Because those guys then spend camp on their skills, on their game. Because they're not yo-yoing in weight, those guys maintain hair trigger reflexes. The reflexes aren't dampened by weight gains and then weight cutting. Right, Oscar, back in the day, there's some fights where he had a deal with HBO. He wouldn't even allow himself to be weighed the night of the fight because he didn't want that weight coming out, right, that number. So I believe Oscar in his heyday at 147 and 154 was walking around at 165, 170. Let me also say, too, that I believe that's one of the reasons why his career declined. Because being a boxer then ends up being too much work. Rather than being in the ring doing what you love, you're in the sauna, losing weight. Right? Well, let me just say, Oscar's a heavy puncher. Heavy puncher. Because of Belford's, what I believe, chin problems, and I've seen a number of fights where he gets hit in the chin and the world's not the same, I believe now, just watching more Belford films, that Oscar De La Hoya at minus 200 represents compelling value. Understand, there's heavy risk involved, right? We're assuming that Oscar De La Hoya, more than a decade later, still has the skill set that he had in his last fight, which he lost to Manny Pacquiao. Right? If you want to overlook that fight because Oscar's flat that night, then you go to the Steve Forbes fight, and Oscar didn't look great in that fight either. Right? But we're assuming that Oscar still has the skills. And one of the problems with Oscar is that Oscar relied a lot on timing and movement. And, of course, as you get older, your legs are the first to go. When you've been out of the ring, timing goes as well. So we're assuming a level of excellence on Oscar that may or may not be there. But, at a, but as I've said here before, this is the gambling part of the internet. Oscar, while he's out on the town with his girl when a camera comes by, sometimes lifts his shirt and says to the camera, hey, it's getting serious. Right? You understand Oscar is one of these guys who has a nightlife. Okay. Okay, fair enough. But you also understand that Oscar has already lost the weight. That Oscar's in shape now. That Oscar has taken this fight seriously. So I like Oscar at minus 200. Power is the last to go. I believe Oscar still hits hard. Oscar, whatever you think about him, always had a great chance.
right? Whatever you think about him, he always had a great chin. If this becomes a chin contest, I'm going with Oscar De La Hoya. Understand too, folks, I've had concerns about this fight in part because of Belford's therapeutic use in the past of performance-enhancing drugs. Right? I thought if anybody is going to maintain power and speed, it's going to be a guy who might be juicy. Right? We don't care whether it's therapeutic or what have you. Juicing's juicing. You're getting a boost. Right? So I was nervous about that. But understand, this fight now is actually under the auspices of the California State Boxing Commission. Let me let you in on another secret, too. This is not a six-round fight, folks. It's an eight-round fight. You take a guy who's a non-boxer, whose previous one boxing match went something like one round, and you tell him that he has to survive eight rounds against a puncher in Oscar De La Hoya who has had fights, like the Mayweather fight like the I Corte fight that went 12 rounds. And I'll take my chances. With all my doubts about Oscar, right? Clearly a Hall of Famer, great fighter, great fighter. Uh, life outside the ring, uh, challenging for those who want to bet on him. With all my doubts about Oscar, I like him here against this opponent, right? I get the feeling that the California State Boxing Commission is going to insist on a level playing field. That those urine samples have to come back clean. I also think De La Hoya picked this fighter, picked this opponent for a reason. Right? Oscar announces he's coming back. He's the one with the leverage and the negotiations. He picked this guy. And Belford himself is in his 40s. Right? Something like 44 years old. So, given Oscar's punching power, given the fact that Oscar is a technician, given the fact that Oscar, even though he's out on the town a bit, Given the fact that Oscar looks like he's in great shape. Given the fact that he doesn't have to cut weight for this fight. I like Oscar De La Hoya at minus 200 here. I think it represents compelling value. Right? Belford, too, in watching films, does have really fast hands. Against MMA guys. But Oscar is a guy who always seemed to have a sense of spacing, right? If Belfort, who seems to be a combination puncher, comes in trying to throw combinations, I believe Oscar is going to be able to pivot. The risk involved with throwing combinations is you leave yourself open. And Oscar is only going to need one opening to close the show. I'm expecting Oscar to win. I'm expecting a stoppage. But I'm not going to be greedy here. I'm just going to take Oscar simply to win at minus 200. If he wins by decision, I'll be a happy camper. Just like I'll be if Oscar wins by stoppage. The minus 200 is a ridiculously low line for a fight in Oscar's sport against an opponent with chin problems who only has one round of professional boxing experience. But I need for you to understand the risk involved. Anderson Silva already beat Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. In other words, an MMA guy in shape has already beaten a championship boxer. Let's be real here for a moment too. Julio Cesar Chavez Jr went the distance with Saul Alvarez. There's talent there. 
he got beaten by Anderson Silva. I'm not saying that Chavez Jr. is the most prepared for fights. I'm not saying that making weight is easy for him. By the way, he's another guy who cuts weight to make weight. Right? But understand, you have a situation here where Oscar is going around lifting his shirt. Saying, folks, it's getting serious. You look at Oscar, Oscar looks in shape. I'm not expecting De La Hoya to have problems making weight. I think this is Oscar's fight to lose. I can't believe the casino is only requiring you to lay a minus 200. I like Oscar De La Hoya here. I view the bet as compelling. But if Belford wins the fight, whether by stoppage or by decision, understand the risk. You lose it all. That's how I see it. I like Oscar, minus 200. I consider it a gift. I think Belford gets stopped and popped. I don't see him going the distance. But I'll take the cushion of knowing that if it goes the distance, then I'm dealing with, of course, a Hall of Fame, right? Oscar's not a future Hall of Famer, folks. He's in the Hall now. <laughs> I'm dealing with a Hall of Fame fighter who was a craftsman in his craft against a guy with one pro fight, right? I think if it goes the distance, the odds are in my favor. I like the minus 200 on a favorite here. I like Oscar simply to win over Victor Belford. The Victor Belford versus Kelvin Gastelum fight is in my favorites folder. I encourage people to give it a look. Let me just say too, that there's a difference between a guy with a chin getting caught at an awkward moment, Manny Pacquiao against Marquez, the fourth fight, and getting knocked out. You say, okay, well, Pacquiao got caught there. That was a great shot by Marquez. And a guy with chin problems, where, you know, the guy's looking good and stuff like that, Roy Jones. Let's name a big guy who I think has chin problems. Right, where there's some fights where Roy gets hit and, oh, he's not quite the same Roy. I believe Belford has chin problems. In dealing with Oscar's 45, that's going to be a problem. Oscar's left hook that he throws at a 45-degree angle. Let me also point out, too, that because Oscar's left hook is unorthodox, it's hard for an experienced boxer to block. A guy with one pro fight, in my opinion, is going to have major problems trying to stop it. That's how I see it. If Oscar were fighting Floyd Mayweather, anyone who could figure out that Oscar's one-handed and inverted, he'd have problems. Here he's fighting a guy with one pro fight. I'll take my chances. I like Oscar in this fight at a minus 200. Let me know what you think. Please feel free to leave your comments in the comment section of this video. If you agree or disagree with me in terms of my take on Oscar's fight style, or let's say my view that his life outside the ring may not have helped his career, and that he was a weight cutter, and that he was a guy with natural gifts who didn't really put in the work to keep them. Then I hope you leave those comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.